<laughs> you're, you're gonna roll. <laughs> I... Noah, say it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say it. Go on. Repeat what Sean just said. What did uh, I say? Oh, to your mom. <laughs> right. What did you say again? When I, I said I, I got the Maruchan ramen noodles from your mom's vagina. I okay. still don't know what the fuck ramen is. You haven't explained it thoroughly enough. You, like, the closest we've come Ho- to hello? like actually understanding is... Hey. I just made it. Um, like I have a question. <laughs> I want to clarify real quick. So I was just informed that by my buddy Sean uh, that I play D and D with. Um, he's talking about something called like Maruchan ramen, but he said he got it from your vagina. So I'm a little. I just like to clarify. <laughs> so true. <Yeah. laughs> I guess yeah. He probably did drug you if that's the case. If he didn't. Know <laughs> So true. I see, I assume so too. That's why I probably didn't clarify. <laughs> yeah, I know they're fucking weird. I don't know, dude. I don't, I don't oh my god, on them for real. Fucking hell. I well, I mean, that's one of the main ingredients ingredients of Maruchan ramen noodles. Well, well, now I've got now I've got a clip to fucking post on the YouTube channel you later. Get some of that. Actually, that sounds great. Roof it all in the Maruchan ramen noodles. I'm a, I'm a oh, I mean, if the show says myself. it's real, it must be real. I'm just gonna, like, drown myself in a river. I don't know. Alright, I'll let him know. <clears throat> I'll let him know. <coughs> oh, God. People, um, uh, my session. mother said if yep. you did, she doesn't remember it, so it must have not been all that great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I love your mom. By the oh way, God. this is a it's common great. trope for me. I have yeah. done this on multiple occasions. <laughs> I, I expect it like, so, considering how nonchalantly she apparently answered. Yeah, yeah, no, I've been, I've been doing that. Like, whenever someone says a mom joke, calling my mom and let, like a friend of mine and like letting her know that they said it uh, since like middle school. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> yes, you did it at camp. I remember yeah. it was. <laughs> Don't fuck me, this. <laughs> I am uncomfortable with the vibes that we have created in the studio today. I am so glad that I turned on audio right then because that's going to be a fucking hilarious <laughs> clip. Oh my god. Yeah, she's watching Roswell right now apparently in the show. Mhm. And they had a mm-hmm. in the show they had a nail polish that protects date rape drugs and the drinks so kind of just worked out in our favor for this joke. Oh, no, like, that that's, like, an actual thing, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I assume it's so. It's actually super cool. Yeah, yeah, I assume so, since it's, you know, on the show Roswell. <laughs> Cicada. Bug. <laughs> A bug I saw the other day that I really like. colon three. Okay. I'm gonna be hitting that colon right. three. Like All right. So... Yeah. Did you want to do the recap? I oh god, my Jesus! You just sound like you. You just sound like oh you were fucking god. drunk there, Jesus. Yeah. Okay, I will do the recap real quick. We didn't do a lot. Um, I will do the come. Shut up. Uh, yeah. we did. It was it was a fucking shopping episode. That's literally what it was. Uh, went around, oh, bought a unholy amount of stuff um including like some new clothes and armor some kits um you know some uh other kind of smaller things like that uh and then the only other really thing that happened is uh a vague like third Third person view of the uh Asmar chick that uh Pupe interacted with talking about uh seeing them again or something similar. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, um, um hey, there we go. Okay. Yes, so, 
after a night of merriment, uh, you all wake up in the hotel rooms that Ajax had bought for you. Um, well, actually, we should probably touch on um, Adam. Uh, what <laughs> what was Minthro up the entire day uh, doing? I believe uh, previously you had said something about repairing armor for the most part. Oh, buddy, you are very quiet. Real quiet. Oh, uh, any better? There we go. Oh, much better. Molto bueno. Uh, yeah, mostly focusing on repairs, and that would honestly be it. Like, Minthro's gotten pretty screwed over time. <clears throat> All right. Um, uh, Minthro, real quick, did you get your cut of the gold that we sold? You should have had like somewhere around like nine hundred to a thousand ish gold. Yep. Okay. I can't remember if you were with us whenever we actually ended up selling <clears throat> that or not. Yeah, I think we did it at the end of the last session that I was part of. Yep. Mm -hmm. Gonna turn this down a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, uh, you all wake up the next morning. Uh, I don't think technically any of you drank anything. <laughs> you just partied. You know, like you're the you're the one guy who's holding a can of liquid death there in the corner. <laughs> I cannot and can drink. <laughs> I. <laughs> It's not that he's Wait, I, know, I know that you're I know that you're like talking about like it in a religious sense, but <laughs> the way you said it was like, oh no, I I don't drink. <laughs> M Minthro probably wouldn't <laughs> let <laughs> bricks drink. No. Absolutely. You can't use it as a coping mechanism. Big sad. Not allowed, not allowed. <clears throat> Sorry, buddy. Real. Could bricks breathe out? There's not enough water in it. Yeah. Could you he ever, use beer? You ever poured, like, beer... Is there enough oxygen in it? Amphibian? <laughs> Wine have more? It, it has to be an alcohol that, ha that has, like, a beer. good amount of oxygen or oxygen bubbles in it. Fish live in water. They will die in alcohol. <laughs> Who would have guessed? <laughs> That's the very first thing that comes there. up. Interesting. Very... <laughs> I, oh no, that's just gonna make me sad to think about how many fish died for this to be, <laughs> for this to be Beyond determined, <laughs> for this to be the first thing up on Google. Oh, I don't know no. what. You know exactly what has fucking happened, right? Somebody's had a motherfucking goldfish, and they're just like drunk off their fucking ass, and like, oh, Mister Fishy, do you want some alcohol? Dump. Oh, yeah, is that didn't work. Where's the money, Lebowski? Dip. Where's the fucking money, shithead? <laughs> Waterboarding a fish with beer. Yeah, pretty much. God, I wish that were me. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, no, you all um, <clears throat> awaken in not necessarily the worst rooms in the world. It's, in fact, very nice to sleep in a bed for um, <laughs> once. The first after. time in God knows how long. <laughs> uh... Technically, since you left the prison, but those prison beds weren't. Those they, were, they were just carved No, they stone. weren't beds. They it was hay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, yeah, no, I think this is the first time you've been in a bed since Harthum, which well, that's like two months ago, like almost three months ago now. I mean, Bricks is in a in a bucket. Like that. That's just what he he's in a bucket. So that hasn't changed much for him. Okay. Well, <clears throat> in that case, uh, you all probably have a pretty good night's sleep as uh, the um, <clears throat> matron uh, goes around knocking on doors, waking everybody up for the morning. I get to heal, finally! <laughs> that entire time I was at 8 HP. 
Damn. Damn. Stiff breeze would have knocked you over. <laughs> yep. And I got rid of my exhaustion. Yeah. So you all receive a long rest. Yay. Oh, I have spell I'll slots back. Yes. I'd be longing. Although I just realized I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't really use any spells or anything. <laughs> um, I'm kind of chilling. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like Akhenaten, he's just like been spending a, it's like a siesta for him. It's like, yeah. it's nice to get out of the camp. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. <clears throat> well, everybody else, like the long rest doesn't matter much. For me, it matters a lot. <laughs> um so we got our rations, we got our um we got our rations, we got our fucking um all of our magic items and stuff. So well, the I question think... is yep. Mama, right now you just need to pick up any armor or uh anything yeah that, i think uh, we was... needed a, d a day or two around for our clothes and stuff to be made oh right right right, right. so i th i think when when did a uh, cat say that the uh clothes would be done <clears throat> he said sometime around next afternoon so okay probably around three o'clock ish okay so we've got like another you know probably 12 hours or, or you know, probably eight or so hours before we need to head over that direction. Yep. Okay. I think, okay. <clears throat> so since bricks just needs a bucket, he's probably staying in somebody else's room. Uh, whose room am I staying in? <laughs> uh, let, you know what? Um, I want everybody to, Roll a d6. D6, d6, d6. Wrong. That is Discord. Uh, d6. Five. Five? Five. Three. Four. I mean, four. And Bricks rolled a three. Yep. And Minthro rolled a three. Okay, <laughs> so <clears throat> Bricks, you uh, wake up uh, finding that uh, your bucket is sitting on top of a dresser right next to Minthro's bed, who is currently out of her suit of armor uh, and resting on a pillow. Brooks just, it like, pops his head up and is just kind of like... <sighs> God. <clears throat> I gotta say, it's nice not... It, even though I was just in a bucket, it was nice not being in a mortal peril while in said bucket. Um, and then proceeds to, like, crawl his way out on top of the dresser. Water spills onto the dresser as you uh, <laughs> hop on out. Um, you hear the pitter-patter of uh, water on the floor as mint... Uh, mint, you... <laughs> I assume... I assume that uh, whenever bricks get out of bed, he shakes off. No, he doesn't. He's like just a dog. No, he's he's just walking around. You you pro what probably wakes Mint up is the wet slap of him hitting the ground after hopping off the dresser. Yeah. Remember probably. when Bricks when Bricks walks around, he's like sounds like a fat kid in like 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 uh sandals at the pool, you know? Like when they <laughs> just get out, it's like how do I know exactly what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, I think exactly anybody who's been to a like. pool while anybody else is there knows that fucking sound. <laughs> Fat kid in sandals at the pool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Real. We're, we're, I want I want me a big bitch with normal people legs. <laughs> what the fuck did I just hear? No. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, Anyways. Mint, how how is your morning going? Pretty good, but I, I was wondering, uh, did we share a room or did he? Who all is sharing rooms? With me? Currently, it is you and Bricks are sharing a room. Yeah, just because uh, you know Bricks doesn't need a room because he just needs a bucket. So pretty much, he just kind of gets chucked around into whatever other room. Okay. So, it would make sense that you're out of your armor. 
Yeah, no, I was just like, did he and his bucket get teleported to the top of my bookshelf in my room? <laughs> no, I feel like Ajax or somebody just probably put it up there. Now thinking, like, th pro what pro here's probably the exact string of events, right? So Ajax or whoever put the bucket in the room. They, they were thinking, oh, it's probably going to be used for you know, washing or something like that, you know, standard affair. And probably while they were in the room, Bricks just proceeds to climb up the dresser, get into the bucket, the water spills, and they're just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and then walk out. You're a rat bastard. Yeah. <laughs> All of this You're just a little menace. Absolute deviant. We're talking about Bricks here. He causes Spunky little guy. He he causes world shattering events. <laughs> and has made more immortals than he knows what to <laughs> fucking do with. Wait. <laughs> uh, do you do you want to do you want to rephrase that? <laughs> what? He's made immortals. Bricks. You, you, you said mortals. You said no. Bricks has made more mortals. No, I yeah. my, the mind probably didn't pick me up, but I said immortals. I see. I I thought I heard mortals, but I was like, no, he definitely said immortals. I didn't even. These guys are different. Because well, because I've said on multiple occasions, like you know, uh, yeah, yeah. I you know I've made guys, probably like thirteen people immortal. Mm -hmm. These guys are just horny on main. Don't listen to them. What else is new? <laughs> Yes, oh, um, main on your horn. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so, Adam, how did do, how does mince morning go? As uh, you are awoken by the wet slap of a axolotl hitting the ground. What a sentence! What a brand <laughs> new sentence! <laughs> what a brand new sentence! <laughs> it 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 kind of sounds like someone just spiked fucking bricks. <laughs> anyway, sorry, Adam. Go ahead. Oh, I would uh, watch that transpire. Shake my head. Uh, board throw, and start making my way out. Uh, a few things that I would like to purchase today. Okay. Yeah. Um, boarding throw is uh, only what, like a minute for you, right? Because you're an armorer, or uh, technically ten minutes. But... Ten minutes. That's right. Yeah. So you know you you do what everybody does. You put your pants on one leg at a time, except to, your pants are a giant robot. <clears throat> uh, you gather your things and you head out the door. Um, Whilst you're doing this, um, Akhenaten, you awake in, <laughs> you awake in a room to see Pupe currently lumped in a chair. He looks very, how do I put this? He looks more like a puppet than a living thing at this moment. Well, um, Akhenaten wakes up and goes about his morning yoga. Um, because he has a morning yoga routine, because that's a thing that Akhenaten would do. And oh my what? god, he's so autistic! I love him. He just he <laughs> he just he, listen. He needs to be limber, right, for the day. Um, and uh, then he's going to get dressed. Um, he to a strict schedule, and uh, and get equipped and everything. Um, uh, and then he's gonna look to the husk question mark of Poupe and be like um are you in there um Poupe's just gonna like sit up just kind of like actually get like a stiff like body position as of like someone sitting in a chair and be like yeah I'm here hmm do you even need to sleep I mean so far, I have, and if if not, I haven't figured out how not to yet. I usually it's usually just kind of happens. I just kind of slump down for a little bit, for a little bit, and bam! I guess I'm sleeping. 
Feels like it, at least, I think. Do you dream? Not often. No, you do dream. <clears throat> but just not often. Exactly. Hmm. Intriguing. That is all. And then he's going to walk out of the room. <laughs> that um, is all. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> as you open the door, you uh, accidentally bump the door into Minthro uh, as you exit. Pink, <laughs> you like it's Pink. the it's the it's the Half Life crowbar sound when it's like a <laughs> metal surface, um, and uh, he like pulls back on the door. He's like, "Hmm, I am sorry about that. I didn't mean I didn't see you there." This is fine. Where are you off to this morning? Hmm, I do not know yet. Possibly breakfast. I'm going to explore this clerical. Hold on, wait, let me turn you up a little bit. Can you repeat that? I'm going to explore this square for a little while. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Well, perhaps I will join you after I eat. <clears throat> Entering the uh, tavern proper, you see that Ajax is currently uh, sitting at the bar um, with a large array of, uh, it looks like just a bunch of breakfast materials. There's pork, there's like slabs of ham, uh, along with eggs, bacon, uh, you know, that good hearty full breakfast. And uh, there seems to be a not as many plates as you might think uh, for your whole party, considering that he knows only, what, three of you have to eat? Three out of mm -hmm. five. Yeah. All of us have to eat. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're not... <laughs> yeah, You're it's, not, not, it's not Alwyn and uh, Harvey anymore. You know, so only two of us have to eat. All of us have to eat now. Yeah. Yeah, because two of us don't eat as much as the other two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Right. I, I imagine, um, Akhenaten, as you're going down the stairs, you just see wet spots along, like, one of the, on, along one of the sides, and you just see bricks trying to get up a stool. Um, Akhenaten's gonna go help bricks get onto the stool. Um, and then, uh, uh, and he says, um, ah, yes, there you go. Now, I'm off to eat texturally safe foods. And <laughs> he doesn't say that. But <laughs> I need to find my safe foods. Hopefully he doesn't, they have he doesn't chicken say it. <laughs> he doesn't say it, but he does do it. Yes. I luckily have brought my stash of grilled cheese and chicken tenders, so we should be fine. <laughs> 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 God, true. Um Yeah, uh but Akhenaten's gonna gonna sit down for breakfast. He eats primarily meat. That's just because yeah. he's kind of rough. Well, I mean, it's basically all meats. There's, like, I guess you can... Would you consider eggs being a meat? They're a vegetable. It, they are most certainly not. I don't <laughs> right. know. I, no, he's kind of spitting. Wait, let him cook. <laughs> they grow on a bush, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> you count chickens as bushes? <laughs> I mean, they're vaguely, vaguely bush-shaped. I do count chickens as a type of bush, all right? Um, Jesus. <laughs> Ajax uh, looks to the group as they start to assemble. <clears throat> well, it looks like you all had enjoyed your night's rest. <laughs> I like to think that, <laughs> I like to think that Akhenaten hasn't, like, pressed down a cowlick yet. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, he's, I mean, he's a short fur, so yeah. it's kind of like, he's like, he's got like the, his hair texture is that of like, uh, oh, what are they fucking called? I mean, besides the dog that he's literally, that the jackal, the, uh, jackal. Um, no, but the, the hair texture is like a Doberman. Um, mm. So it's very like, like, it's like stubble all over his body. Mm. How well equipped is this town? Like, how big of a town is this? Uh, this is a metropolis. It is the biggest kind of towns that you can find. All right, cool. 
Just, just if you're looking for something specific, you can find it here pretty much. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> um. Yeah. Etheria is a huge trade center, so you should be able to find whatever you need. All right. So we heal an airship. I mean, yeah, you could. Damn, that went by a really long time. The f- Would somebody play Pokemon right now? What the fuck was that noise? <laughs> no, that, that was my notification sound. It's well, just sure. a Pokemon call? Yes. What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm a nerd, fuck you. The vibe I, is in shambles. I don't know the what's vibe worse. The fact is in shambles. I don't know what's worse. The fact that I knew right <laughs> off of that, or yeah, both of you are sus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, what would be sus if he knew exactly which one it was? It's Vaporeon. Nope. No. That's cursed. <laughs> right cursed. to get it with that one, Aaron. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> also, Aaron. It's not so God of War. Fuck Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway. Anyway. Mm. Past that. So what's go. your all's plan today? I mean, it looks like the um, automaton is all fixed up. What? Oh. What does that word mean? He points over to Minthro. He looks over at Minthro. Hmm. That is an interesting word to use for him. Oh, yeah. You don't know there's a fairy inside yet. <laughs> no. Brix is the only one in the party right now that knows. No. Oh, shit. But, you know, Puke, they should know because the uh, prison. They invaded Mint. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Because there would be a kind of. Understanding there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, you remember how we almost got beat to death because she just absolutely had to try and stealthily use a welder? <laughs> <laughs> and like, Hold on, guys. Let me stealthily use my arc welder real quick. Could you imagine how funny it would be if you're a goblin and you're, you're like two goblin guards and you hear some like like prisoners whispering and then you just hear <laughs> like fucking the loudest noise you've ever heard in your fucking life? <laughs> Hey, I got away with it for a while. Somehow, <laughs> goblins are like ah. So I make that noise sometimes when I poop, and it's like they just shrugged it off for a little bit. He's been pooping for a very long time. I didn't know robots <laughs> did that. Like, <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. So late. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, um, what all is the plan? I was thinking of perhaps walking around town aimlessly. Aimlessly. If anybody would like to meander with me, you are more than welcome to. Meandering does sound fun. Yes, it's a very enjoyable activity. I mean, obviously, with how big this place is, there's going to be stuff to do, but is there anything going on in town while we're here? Well, the Harvest Festival is not for another two weeks, so uh, not much to do. Just, uh, you know, your day-to-days. But if you're looking for something to do and if you don't mind well doing a job for me i could offer up some gold he looks over at you bricks and then looks over at uh pupae <clears throat> your um pocketbooks are looking a little light there looks over um, at my Hock 500 Martin. plus gold looks back yeah Hock i was about Martin. to say <laughs> Hock Martin, uh raises his hand As if okay. he was like, like waiting to be called on. <laughs> Fucking uh, Zelda, bro. Okay. Yeah, the... go go on. 
um, he says, um, are there any, is there any livestock to wrestle here in the city? That was lit. Um, there are stockyards, yes. Are we allowed to wrestle the livestock? I don't think they're for wrestling. I, um, you gotta buy them first. Uh, <laughs> Yo, are we, gonna, are we about to rake in the gold, bro? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Two dudes talking in the streets. I could definitely beat a bear in a fight. Like, you want to find out? <laughs> What's the job? Well, you know my job, right? Hey, helping friends get into the city because I think it's a little unfair that uh, people uh, stop so frequently and so many denied access just for a couple little mistakes that they've made. Right? Yeah. Well, if I could have a couple of you take care of somebody for me so that it's easier to get into and out of the city would you mind doing that it pays well um take care in what way and he looks at you pupae with a, a a gaze that says do i really need to tell you of all people like pupae pupae just like slurps up the food in their hand he goes okay Hold on. Who? How much gold do we get? Well. <clears throat> because I'm but... sorry, I'm not going to be, you know, helping, helping out with uh, some high government official. Just, you know, no, for no, a paltry not, amount not. of gold. I hope you understand. <laughs> I think you misunderstand. It's not a high government official. It's uh, somebody who's good at their job, which is border security. So, uh, Still. and you, you four look pretty strapping. So I think it'd be easy for you to take her on. Uh, she's a lust operative from the Adventurers Guild. Her name is Love. Uh, inherited a uh, tinkerer shop down at the West End. Um, immediately has that's the that's the Azamar, correct? Yes, it is. You would remember that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. You and me, Pupe, would know that name immediately. Um, I'm sorry, friend, but her specifically is off my books for now, at least. Oh, Pupe, that hurts me so. I, I've been so good to you, my friend. This and, is how you pay me. And honestly, she's Don't been quite good to me. Don't try the guilt trip crap. I, honestly, she's been quite good to me. I have a bit of a, a, a thing going on with her, honestly. That is For, definitely just... rose-tinted <laughs> Those are definitely rose-tinted goggles. Yeah, got their but Br Brick's like not <laughs> entirely knowing like what's happening. Just kind of stops, and you just see him rotate on the stool, and he's just staring at Pupay, just like what? But you know what? At least he, if you describe it to him, he would know what Rose looks like now. I mm -hmm. <clears throat> What? Uh, you got the you got the trireme, the uh, their tri cream, uh, the, the bug person. Yeah, the fly bug. I was like, there was a bug guy too, wasn't there? I got that. Yes, there was a. It was a fly person, I believe. But uh, listen, boys, girls. Um, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. She's an operative from Lust. You know what that means, right? Nope. Well, <laughs> let's just say that uh, in her line of work, she doesn't do the most savory thing. And neither do you. What do you mean? I just bring people in and out. Sometimes goods. I don't hurt nobody. 
looks out into the alleyway to see the drug like epidemic going on. <laughs> like, Br- Briggs is just staring him, him down because it's like, okay, buddy, look, I understand that you know you're just bringing goods and people in, but sometimes that just means you're an accessory instead of actively doing the hunt. So well, don't try that crap on me. Anyway, when you think about it. He's not doing anything the U.S. government hasn't done. To <laughs> Shut up! I don't want to get. Down. I don't want to get political on here. I'm. I want to have fucking <laughs> fun with D and I don't want to get fucking political. Um, Unless it's funny. Unless it's a very good meme. <laughs> so, your hands aren't exactly clean. But not clean, I guess. But, but I do want to ask. What's the pay? The pay? Well, she is a border officer, so... If I remember right, they're offering about a... A three? But I can throw in another one. A four? Who? Who is offering? He, uh, gives a little tap to his shoulder. Um... If you would like, you can make a history check. Uh, Pupe would just know because he has Thieves Cant and would know that uh, he's signaling that uh, he's affiliated with some guild of some kind. Uh, I got a, I got a 16. 30, 20. Bro, what is these rolls? <laughs> that was kind Jesus. of fucking crazy, not gonna lie. A dirty 20 and two 16s. Yeah, no, that's... Especially when you consider that me and Akhenaten have ones in history. Yeah, we're both not historians by any stretch of the imagination. (laughs) Um, You are so quiet. Yeah, you are very quiet. Alright, how about now? Better. Slightly better. Slightly better, still quiet. Um... But anyways, yes, with two sixteens, a twenty. Um, yeah, no, he's motioning to his left shoulder, which usually is already an indicator of what side of the empire this guild functions from. Um, and just by the colors that you see underneath, is mostly blacks and reds. So you can probably assume that uh, he's part of the. Uh, eastern court of the mad flags which is one of the three major thieves guilds okay akhenaten would uh kind of lean back in his chair kind of lowering his tone a little bit and he says no i'm not going to stop any of you by any means if you decide to go on this it is not my job to judge you based on your actions however i personally don't think i would want to go along with this unless there was a very good reason to kill this person that's kind of what i'm thinking oh whoa, whoa, whoa. use the k word hold on you know, <laughs> if you want wanting us to murder this person we want to do it now okay. you, buddy you buddy it out. You it out. <laughs> we heard a syllable and a half and then it was gone <laughs> I it, honestly, it was kind of a, it was kind of impressive how it was just like super clear and crisp for that first one, and it just got it was just so quiet. <laughs> yep, so. I think if you are wanting us to murder someone, we are wanting a clear answer on why they need to die. <laughs> like, that was yeah. a little better, but like, <laughs> like we heard you, but like it still faded out super fast. It's like listening to a mouse talk. I like I under, <laughs> I understood it. You were you were asking uh you were, if you wanted a real good reason. Yeah. You are talking in lowercase italics right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you have to go into like either if Discord's already maxed out, I think you gotta go into like your actual mic settings and turn that thing up as high as it can go. Are you recording on like a helicopter microphone or some shit? Are you recording on like, <laughs> like what are you recording on, bro? This is it, it, it's attached to a mic- ceiling fan, and so it just slowly <laughs> rotates around. <laughs> He's using his microwave microphone, like the little camera inside the microwave. <laughs> and also, 
No one used the M word, okay? No one said the words murder, all right? Yeah, it was take care of. What? Hmm, take care of. But that has friendly connotations. <laughs> sure, buddy. Uh, Ajax I take looks... care of my friends. <laughs> Ajax looks at you, Mint, and goes, A good reason. Is it good enough reason to explain that um, she was one of the head operatives of Lust for about three years and was subsequently fired? Now, I'm no bigwig. I don't operate in the Adventurers Guild's hierarchy, but you gotta fuck up real bad to be thrown on guard duty from a superior's role. I look back to the book. Is that a good enough reason for what I could do? I mean, the thing is, though, you, you don't know what she did. For all you know, they could have asked her to do something, you know, rather heinous, and she didn't do it. And also, we don't know, we, at least I, don't know what this, the whole deal with Lust is. This, this organization, are they particularly bad or something? Mm. Lust is one of the seven main... Divisions? Subsections of the Adventurer's Guild. Yeah. You got pride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got pride, greed, wrath, envy, lust, gluttony, and uh, sloth. Okay, Aaron, quick question. Is the concept of the seven deadly <clears throat> sins a thing in this universe? Not in a religious context, which, you know, uh, you can kind of think of this as, um, how do I put this? If you kind of like how uh, some organizations give themselves like a bad rap on purpose mm -hmm. to kind of highlight their good their good aspects, you, you kind of know what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it's kind of that idea. You so know, they're like... basing their names off the seven sins simply for the show, like they're better than they appear to be. Yeah, you know like how Amazon will like let someone die of a heart attack on their working floor, but then raise everyone <laughs> to pay like a dollar? Jesus Christ. I said don't get uh, political. My bad. Jesus. I thought business was different. That's still But yeah, it's, um, usually they choose a, one of these um, to kind of highlight what they're good at in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, you can kind of think of uh, anybody from any given um, uh, division is proficient in what is entailed. Uh, for instance, their envy department uh, is uh, research and development, uh, which is usually aided by Lust, who engages in mostly espionage. Yeah. Um, Does I deal with the nobles? I'm sorry, say that again? Does Pride deal with the nobles? Uh, Pride is the royal, uh, like, the royal guard. That is why they're currently stationed right outside the city. Okay. Mm. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, I don't know. Who would it be, a, uh, Okay, I think Pupe needs to roll this because he's been alive long enough to actually, like, maybe understand the kind of reputation that uh, Lust holds. Okay. So if you could go ahead and give me a... Probably a history check. I, it's an alphabetical order, but I can do this. Hold on. <laughs> there it is. I was about to say, it's right next to Insight. <laughs> nope. No, you can't do this. Um, <laughs> that's rough, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, chief, that's that's real rough. Um, Pupe, 
all you, you don't remember exactly what they did, but you remember maybe like 200 years ago, maybe 150 years ago, uh, you were around the Eastern Empire. Um, and uh, for whatever reason, Lust was given a very bad rap. You don't know the particulars. You don't even know what they did. But a lot of people seem to really hate uh, the division of Lust. Okay, okay. Hmm. It still comes down to... Because honestly, I don't want to fight her if two of our compatriots aren't in on this. Now, the Min real question... Oh, sorry. What'd you say? Minthro doesn't care one way or another. Now, the real question is, how does the division of Sloth make any money? <laughs> like, what is their deal? Do they I feel just... like Ajax is just getting annoyed with us at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Do they just sit around? Are they the IRS? Anyway, um... <laughs> Uh no, yeah. it's sloth is sloth is mostly relegated to sentry positions uh in oh, siege warfare. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Um uh Akhenaten says, um now again, I have absolutely no problem if you wish to go and undertake this, but I am going to need proper moral convincing. Well, I vaguely remember something, uh few years ago or so um that for some reason people started to not like the lust division but that's all i got i look over at ajax and i say is there a time limit on this offer is this going to expire as soon as we walk out or are we allowed to think on it i'll put it this way um i've got goods outside the city it's pretty pressing for me to yeah. get this done and dealt with. Now, I, just saying dealt with does not mean killing. Yeah. I just need her out of the way. I distract her. Looked up you, Pay. Well, you wanted a date, didn't you? <laughs> I did. You're correct. I think I have an idea, guys. A date's only going to last me a night, fellas. I need her out of the way for months. Oh. So, so what you're looking for is she is out of her post. Yes. Okay. There's not many who match her mental prowess. Well, then. I hey. offer... I offer this. I'm going to go to the nearest library, and I'm going to research lust and the associated divisions. I'm going to research who they are, what they have done. And then I will get back to you with an answer. Briggs, he like, he, he puts a finger on his temple and just kind of like massages his head. What are you hoping to find about an espionage organization? That they are the bad kind of espionage. <laughs> and why would in their in their city would they have any information on them that would badmouth them do you have another source of information i could seek uh, that isn't I put you this? um yeah uh you go downstairs you go down to the cellar and uh, you talk to some of the people down there about lust, and they will make it very clear about why they don't like you. Here, actually, he pulls out like a small strip of parchment and casts uh, um, a few words and uh, rubs the uh, piece of paper as words start to appear. As um, <clears throat> it looks like he gives you an address of some kind. Um. Yeah. Uh, okay. Akadon takes it, uh, nods um, gratefully at Ajax, and then uh, says, um, "You, all three of you, are welcome to follow me as you please. 
but I'm going to go to this address and seek out answers. Um, and Akhenaten is going to stand up, go downstairs, seek out this address, and see if he can get some answers. Okay, yeah. Um, Bricks looks over at Ajax. He said she in- inherited a tinker shop. Yeah, um, her family uh, used to run it, but she didn't want anything to do with it. So, it, I'm sorry, my intel's a little fuzzy, considering they come from biased sources. Um, but yes, in the end, family gave her the tinker shop. She didn't want it. So, she usually has a clerk run it for her. Hmm. Um, I think we could manage something without killing her, having to fight. I mean, yeah, that's... That... Dep- like, that's kind of why I was asking, because, you know, if we could head there and talk to her after, you know, like when she's not on shift, perhaps try to figure something out about her, yeah, we could probably help him out if we really wanted to. Well, she's not going to be off shift for several hours now. Um... Probably not till you know, about eight. That's when the walls close and centuries from sloth take over. Well, I say we try something. Akadan's looking for a reason to murder. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. As soon as he gets the green light, it's whatever, whatever's whatever. You know, like I mean, <laughs> Rex. I say, I say we try something. We'll take it. We'll take. I say we take the job. I'm. Fire me, reach I'm not gonna minions of darkness. All right, Rex. Let me put it to you this way. Um, I'm not gonna guarantee anything. How about this? We put bricks and in her into a box. <laughs> Keep casting spells as many times as we can. <laughs> it's the worst up. form of Russian roulette ever. Yeah, I dude, mean, this is perfect to, though. To be fair, I already had a chaos proc next to her, and it terrified the shit out of me. Because they were, because everybody in the room besides me was wreathed in golden fire, which I thought was just an Asimar thing at the time, but it's okay. Well, it, the thing is, I would have thought it was just an Asmar thing too, but the fact that the other three guards that were in there were also wreathed in holy fire, that made me think it was not an Asmar thing. Very um, true. Burn in holy fire. Fucking hell. But, uh... <laughs> but, Alright, hey Jack, let's, let's put it to you. I'm gonna put it to you this way. Don't expect anything. If we find some way to do so, sure, we might help you out a little bit. But that's not why we're here. We can't prom. We can't promise anything. We'll try, but we can't pro- make promises on it. Mm, that's just a little disappointing. Ajax, look, well, you've, you've done a lot for us, and like I said, we'll try, but. We do have some morals. So. Cringe. <laughs> Cringe. Uh, again. Again. I, I, I heard. Looks over at, he looks over at Pupe. <laughs> I, I heard, I heard Mint say looks over at Briggs. Briggs does have some morals. He can't control the fact that he can, that he kills people indiscriminately whenever a chaos proc happens. And the other one of us is religious. So. <laughs> So, Ajax, we'll see what we can do. I'd like to avoid murder, but if we can't, Hold we on. can't. Hold on, what? Hold on a second. I will say this. Unless absolutely necessary for the safety of us, she's probably not going to die. Well, I don't expect her to die. I expect her to be out of the way. Yes, yes they- they don't, they're, I'm, Ajax, me, Pupe here, I'm saying, we'll figure something out. If it has to be the K word, we'll do it. Otherwise, we'll see what we can do, but we can't make any promises. 
I'm just right right now. <clears throat> make a decision by the end of the day. If not, I'll just find some other people to go do it. If you're looking for some Fair enough. things involved with Slinger, I recommend that we try to dig up some dirt and blackmail him. Blackmail's always fun. Um, blackmail is a good indicator of what we should do. And when she was in mentally interrogating me, um, she had a kickback while doing it. So if it comes down to it, I might be able to mentally cripple her for a couple months. Oh, God. <laughs> Please. I'm going to make her a vegetable. For a couple months. Just a couple months. Put her in a coma for a little bit. But right. become dating material for pupae. They have to be better. <laughs> wow. Rick, like, all uh... I'm saying is, if it comes down to it, I'm sure I can find a way to be a little over 600 or so years of knowledge into her brain all at once. It shouldn't be too much of a problem, right? Bricks will turn and kind of hop off the stool. We'll have some sort of answer for you. But for now... I'm going to the library. Later. And then and he walks I'm, out. I'm going to go find her. Um, Brix, do you need somebody to show you where the library is? Yes, please. Brix kind of like stops at the door. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> <laughs> I mean, I well, don't mind wandering to try to find it, but I guess in doing so, I might cause the entire town to explode. So. You still well, put it in the library. Well, that's the... Opposite of what I want. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll show you a way. Well, Mithro, no. want to go find this tinkerer shop? You might be able to find something there for yourself, too. I like how Bricks will kind of casually, you know, Hint at total annihilation of an area <laughs> as a way <laughs> to get people what? to do stuff. What? Only like 20 square miles, not that much. I mean, there's a chance for me to completely die, divide the city in half as well as the rest of the world. <laughs> I mean, and? Yes, Pupin. I would be okay with going to the Tinkering Shop. All right, let's go. Okay. And so we got three groups, one going to the library, one going to uh, the underground. this uh, address underground, and one going to uh, the shop itself. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> get, some, get some knowledge, get some background, maybe see like if she has like a pattern she follows. All right. I think let's go ahead and follow Akhenaten first. Akhenaten. Keep yeah. Going. So, do 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 do. Uh, will the music start? That is the question. Yes. So, once again, you find yourself going down into these thin pathways. Um, they are wind back and forth down into this large complex of shops and stalls that looks sim very similar to the bazaars that you were familiar with it back home. You follow the piece of paper, uh, which mostly just tells you vague directions rather than giving an actual address. Uh, but eventually you find yourself in front of a small little... It, calling it a shop isn't quite right because it doesn't look like they're selling anything per se. Uh, it's just this small little wooden building that looks a little out of place underneath uh, all this stone uh, filigree uh, that uh, is the underground. Uh, it's <laughs> it's kind of weird to see a house in the middle of the sewers after all. But it seems to be... Uh, have this peaked roof and a tower in the center of it. It kind of looks similar to maybe one of those old frontier churches, except in a more Victorian-ish style. Um, the paint chips off of the building, and it looks like it's in a 
various states of disrepair upon uh, either side. Once the, the northmost sign being the worst, as there is a, a small hole uh, in the building itself. But in front of you stands a doorway, and uh, out front it says, come on in. And a very almost kitsch kind of uh, <laughs> uh, cheesy style, kind of like uh, those live, laugh, love st- signs. Mm-hmm. Right. Nice. <laughs> um, and the last direction that is given on uh, the piece of paper is a sign that says, uh, or not a sign, it's uh, the last direction on the piece of paper uh, that you were given was the words room four and by the time you read that uh the ink on the little strip of paper starts to glitter up and disappear and disperse into the air Hmm. he uh sighs a little bit and uh looks up to this gothic church and he says well here we go. And he's going to walk in. Inside, you can see that there is somebody. It's not necessarily a counter as much as it feels like a reception area where a woman in a nurse's outfit sits down uh, with a book in one hand, a cup of tea on a table in front of her. And she looks up to uh, find you. Oh, uh, welcome in. Sorry, uh, on break, but uh, what what can I do you for? He um, gives a, a bow, um, a overly cordial bow, and says, um, I have come in seek of room four. A room four? Oh, uh, the Grayson's residence. Um, yeah. There's... Give me a second, I'll inform them that you're here, and, uh, well, walk you on over once they know that, uh, you're coming. Uh, any relation? Um, he th- thinks for a moment, and then he says, a friend sent me. Hmm. Oh, well, um, I'll just, uh, be on my way then. Uh, give me two seconds. She puts the book down and walks down a small hallway uh, before turning at uh, the fourth door uh, on the right side. Uh, Knocks, and uh, you hear her say something through the door before uh, she, you can see, undoes a latch from this side uh, and walks in. He um, sits there awkwardly. (laughs) Um, and he just, he's just kind of like, you know, he's wearing like a big old cloak and he like, I I feel like the room is a little too small for him, but like, not like oppressively small, but just like, he looks a little out of place in it. And he's just kind of like rocking back and forth on his feet, just, you know, whistle a little, little, he's just like, you know, it's awkward. As you do so, uh, a child uh, walks up to you. Uh, you don't really know where they came from. They came from behind as uh, they just stare at you dumbfounded. This kid can't be more than like five years old. He's yeah. scrawny, small, uh, wearing like just kind of tattered clothes. Um, but uh, it looks like uh, at least his pants look fairly new. Yeah, big. Nice pants. Thanks. He <laughs> picks his nose. He stares back with like an equal like look of dumbfoundedness. <laughs> like the exact same glassy eyed look. <laughs> um and uh that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you from, Mr? Um, he thinks for a moment, um, and he says, I am from a desert far away from here. 
Mm. What race is this child? <laughs> that feels weird to ask, but like... <laughs> You can see that uh, it's a. <laughs> it looks like an orc child, but very malnourished. Uh, you, you got the Skinny. green skin and the tusks. Yeah, I, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. He just says, uh, "I am from a desert, far, far away from here." He uh, pulls his finger out of his nose, inspects it with. A kind of inquisition that uh, is reserved for, well, scholars. Before he sticks it in his mouth and dives back into his nose again. Akhenaten uh, is fascinated. <laughs> <laughs> what a desert. Uh, it is a place with sand and scorpions and other, like, and sphinxes and... Things of the, that nature. Huh. Why is there so much sand? I believe it has to do with the erosion of rocks, but I'm not too sure. Well, no, because if there wasn't any sand, then it wouldn't be a desert. Maybe. <laughs> and then uh, you hear a click from the hallway as... Um, Oh, Clarence, how did you get out of your room again? Come come here before you see him look back with the same kind of wild eyes as a, a hare caught in a trap before he scuttles around the chairs and out uh, the hole that you saw earlier. I look at the at the woman as he leaves, and I and Akhenaten like points at where the kid went and says... She, she just kind of pinches the uh, bridge of her nose and says... Sorry, uh, the kids here can be a little inquisitive. They didn't say anything too inappropriate, did they? He says, um, that kid is going places. Perhaps <laughs> not college, but places. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so. Uh, Ajax has been putting money aside for them, so... Here's hoping that uh, you know, these kids here can do some good. Oh, um, Ajax. That's the person who sent me. Oh, well, that's... Ain't that lovely. How, how's he been? It's been a while since he's visited. He's been out a couple months getting some materials. He is as purple as ever. I'll take that as a good thing. Um, uh, that is his natural skin tone, is it not? <laughs> It is, but you know. I guess you could, is it is it is it a mauve or is it like a dark purple? Is it like royal purple or like light purple? Like what? It's more of a lavender. A lavender, so like kind of, so kind of like a it's, light. Like it's very this saturated lavender. Like imagine you chose lavender and you didn't adjust the hue, uh, the like the tint or the uh, shade at all. It's just the purest form of lavender. <laughs> Hmm. I he's he's a lavender color, but I suppose perhaps blue in the right lighting, like a royal blue, or I don't know. What would you oh. say his skin color is? Uh, uh it's just all purple to me. Uh, but <laughs> no, uh, he he funds this uh, this establishment. Um, what is this establishment, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, he didn't tell you. Oh, no, God, not exactly. I... He's just not a fan of really giving the people the right information for what they're doing. This is a, um, this is a, how do I put this? Some would call it an orphanage. Some would call it a family care center. Some would call it a old folks home. It's just a place where, you know, people in need stay. Hmm. Interesting. I'm starting to understand why he sent me there. Are the people in room four ready to see me? The Graysons? Well, I guess it's just the Grayson now. But yes, uh, he's as stable as he's gonna be. Uh, uh, yeah. Akhenaten's gonna go. He's gonna go. He's gonna give a polite nod to the woman and then uh, is going to 
go uh, say thank you and then go down to the fourth room and uh, kind of like knock on the door before poking his head in. The chief follows you and uh, you can see in the back of the room there is it's very disheveled. The sheets are on the floor. The mattress has been torn apart and uh, feathers from down uh, are just sprayed all over the place. Uh, There's writing on the walls uh, and in the corner is a dark elf kind of rocking back and forth. Uh, I know what dark elves are, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you do. You notice that, uh, there is a severe lack of them here in this empire. There's not a lot of them. Like you would, you would have expected to see a lot more by now. Is he this also is, purple, or is he more like gray? He's more of. It's not. It's it's like gray. Uh, it's it's not like a purple gray or anything like, like a that. Dark it's gray. Yeah, it's like charcoal. Okay. Yeah. Um. Akhenaten um, gives a a polite bow as he walks into the room um, and kind of like like unconsciously tries to make himself a bit smaller, you know, folds his arms uh, a bit, you know, kind of, you know, shrinks into himself a little bit as to not appear threatening in any any fashion. Um, And as he bows, he says, um, my name is Akhenaten Rolkai. You get halfway through your name before just like in a flash, like within seconds, you see his posture change immediately as his arms eject forward to the corner of the uh, room, grasp on and fling himself as if like a cat running, (laughs) running, uh, you know, uh, a like uh, what's that called wall running Mm there's wall runs and stops right before you his balanced completely on the balls of his feet his knees pointed towards you his muscular form just rippling as he is looking directly at you down at well to you maybe uh, about your mid thigh he is Look, he looks very animalistic. His eyes are just lits, which is very odd for elves. They don't have these kinds of eyes. And he just stares at you. I was looking at my spells to see if I had like calm emotions or anything like that. Um, and uh, I don't, but like I saw the light cantrip, and I'm like, how funny would it be if I just started like flashing light in front of the screen? Like, nightmare, 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 nightmare. Like, <laughs> would that be fucked up? Um... <laughs> that would be very fucked up. <laughs> Me setting off firecrackers in the old people's home. <laughs> um, no, he, uh, he kind of like stops uh, and kind of like finishes half heartedly. Um, I, you know, it's like he started with Akda, and then he like got zoomed at. He's like Ten Roll Kai. Um, oh, I... I'm, so, I'm so sorry. He's well been in this state for <sighs> well ever since he's got here. Um, I try. I I am I am not bothered. It is okay. Um, sir, I am here to. I was here sent here by Ajax, um, to speak to you. I, I have questions of my own. Okay. Um, you see him, like, reach out his hand upwards, uh, palms up, and fingers uh, pointing at you like daggers. Uh, his forearm ripples, the tendons start to flicker a little bit before he grabs his bicep with his other arm and pulls it back. Wait, hold on. What is he? Hold on. Repeat what he does. Uh, basically, he puts his hand upward towards you uh, while grasping his bicep and pulling him back. His, his pulling his arm back. He uh, tilts his head, and now he's just. I want to look this this dark elf up and down. Can I make an insight check or something? I want to know what's going on with him exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go go ahead. 
fuck. Mm, that's not great. Well, that's seven. Um, that's a five, um, seven. Your best guess is he's running on basically animalistic urges. Uh, reduced to nothing more than just primal emotions. And that's like all you understand. Uh, they, from your onset, your initial analysis, he is nothing more than just well, the basic, the basic building blocks of a person. Akhenaten um, says, um, looks over to the woman, and he says, um, no, I have a possible suspicion that may answer all my questions, and I'm going to say a phrase to see what his reaction to it might be. And if his reaction is what I think it will be, then perhaps there is no questioning needed. And then he looks back at the Dark Elf and kind of like, almost like readying himself to like, he doesn't have any weapons on him, right? That I no. see. <laughs> um, no. He, uh, so like kind of ready himself to just like fend off any possible slaps or punches <laughs> or attempted tackles. Um, Akhenaten is going to say, um, tell me, do you know anything about lust? As soon as the first syllable falls out of your Le. mouth. <laughs> Le. Le. Do you know anything about love? <laughs> Tell me about love. No, um, as soon as the first syllable what falls out of his mouth, um, he winces and cowers, taking steps back on his... Uh, his balls of his feet before he falls flat footed and like crab walks backwards underneath the bed that is so tore up and his eyes glow from underneath as if a cat and uh, as if a cat was hit with a beam of light in the middle of the night. Mm. He, uh, the, the woman, he's um, he's a refugee from the. Uh, you know, the colonial wars. Well, not the colonial wars, sorry, the uh, empirical wars. About Tell 200 about... years ago. Uh, yes. About, about 200 years ago, uh, you may... I, I'm sorry, I don't see many of you people around here, so I assume you're not from Etheria. He nods. Well, you see... About 200 years ago, the Empire decided to start incorporating a lot of the uh, nearby countries. Most of them have lost all their identities, <laughs> cultural or really any kind of identity, in favor of uh, the Aetherian identity. It's um, why there's still a lot of bitter feelings, uh, especially with uh, Red Rocky. Uh, the uh, dwarvish country to the east. Mm. You know, he... Some say that... Uh... Oh, well, let, let's talk about this out in the hall. Um, he gives one got... last look to... Um, one last look to the, the dark elf before following. He uh, continues to stare at you before the door closes. Uh, some say that uh, he was part of them. Um, well, we don't know too much, but part of some sort of experiment. Uh, they rounded up a whole bunch of uh, people like him uh, when they were... It, there was a small country to the east of Aetheria originally. Um... It's a, uh, well, how do I put this? The Aetherian Empire wanted a way to fight that wasn't so costly in manpower. So uh, they did some digging and did some research and, uh, well, this is the result. Hmm. She kind of looks longingly at the door. 
So they, and this was, this was Lust's doing. Well, it wasn't Lust per se. It was, it was Envy that developed it, but it was Lust that implemented it. Deployed it. it. Hmm. Well, if that isn't something that I'm looking for, not the method, that is, but thank you for this information. Do you know anything else? Possibly. I am le- looking to learn more about Lust and, and the related agencies. I've been told different things from different people, obviously. Well, um... I wish I could be a helpful source, but uh, I don't know too much about history. Uh, like Mr. Grayson's really my only tie to lust. Um, Can you not make a history check of some sort? <laughs> he doesn't say that. He doesn't say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> you yeah. stupid bitch. You stupid bitch. It's right there on your character sheet. Um <laughs> All I know is that um, ever since then, Lust has been a lot more discreet with their goings-ons. Mm, discreet indeed. Perhaps what I am looking for may come straight from the horse's mouth. Do you know anything, perhaps the name of this project, the name of this thing that they... MK did? Ultra. No. <laughs> MK Holy Ultra. shit. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> uh yeah, um most people called it the Fang, as you can see he starts acting more like a cat than he does a person. Indeed, the Fang. Interesting. Thank you very much. Um, no I'm problem. Going, I'm going if, to... Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no problem. And if you'd like to stay for tea, or uh, I could set you up with a meeting or something, uh, just ask me. Uh, he gives a nod and says, uh, what is your name? Oh, I... It's Abigail. Abigail. It is a pleasure to meet you. Take this. And I give her a gold piece. Uh, one gold piece. Um... And, uh, walk out. <laughs> uh, sir, this, this really isn't necessary. I appreciate it, but <laughs> the front door closes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're gone. <laughs> um, and with that, he's going to head back to Ajax. Um, yeah, let's, it looks like, uh, looks like Adam isn't here. Just, oh, no, he's back. Bye, Adam. Adam. Baby. Hello. Sweet baby. Okay, let's uh, Lover of throw... mine. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo. Let's go over to Minthro and uh, Pupe. Uh, if I can turn on... Do, do, do. Minstrel and Peepee. Minstrel and Peepee. <laughs> Peepus room. Peepness. The Peepus room. Yeah. All right. So you find yourselves uh, walking along the streets. Uh, it's fairly calm today. Uh, yesterday was super bustling and, you know, it was hard for you guys to get around to really go to the shops you needed to. But today is different. It's a lot more calm before, you know, one of you realizes that uh, it's well, the Sabbath, uh, a few of the uh, local religions gather together to pray today. It's their day of rest. Now, you find your ways over to a small workshop on the west end of town. Do, 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 do. I know I had a song for this. <laughs> I know I had a song. <laughs> yeah. 
There we go. Not necessarily a song, but... You guys come across a small workshop and house. Uh, it seems to be a store that is fairly unbothered by the rest of the customers that are walking around. Um, the workshop is the leftmost side of the building. Uh, you can see a sign that says open and a gear uh, icon right above that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're stepping on your brand. They're stepping on me. God damn it. Um, I mean, we could just go in, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's an open shop. Let's just fucking go in. Yeah. All right. Um, you walk past uh, this little alcove that has stairs leading upwards to the second floor of the building uh, and walk into the front door uh, on the leftmost side of the building where you can see a small dwarf occupying a counter right behind these sketches of uh, various mechanical pieces. The room is full of many things that you would usually apply to a general goods store, uh, tools, toys, stuff like that. But uh, occasionally there's some mechanical component like uh, these little rabbits uh, or goggles or uh, other objects. Um, and then there is in the back of the room, uh, like a large archway that leads to a display room. The dwarf behind the counter says, Hey, what's gonna do you for? Um, it's, it's, yeah, hi. Um, I was wondering about, I had a couple questions, I guess. He nods. Uh, his eyebrows obscure his eyes, basically making him look like the most stoic figure that you've ever seen. Bet. Um, so... I heard I met this lovely woman on my way into the city. Um, and Azamar, her name was, uh, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Just kind of like trying to think. Um, you see him raise one half of his monobrow. <laughs> um, oh, that's right. Love. And I was wondering if you knew where she might be. Probably at work. Good point. Um, where does she usually hang out after work? Does she ever stop by here? Yes, no? This is her place or residence. Um, is it? Oh, I thought it was just a shop. Nah, the other half of the building is a, a home and workshop. Ah, so I am quite, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm quite smitten of her, not going to lie. Ever since I met her at the uh, at the gates and everything during my little interview there, I've been quite mm -hmm. smitten. Um, and I'm only need because of the interaction we had. I've never had an interaction like that before with anyone, so I was wondering if it'd be okay if I... Could speak to her later? I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I just saw what was in text. <laughs> in session text. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yeah, no. <clears throat> you, uh... You see, uh... The, um... Dwarven man look at you up you up and down and go <clears throat> he say uh, I like to keep um, my employers business their business and my business my business so if you got something to say I'm happy to pass it on but uh, 
Uh, Setting up a meeting is not my purview. I got oh. a question out of Gabe. Yeah, go ahead. This was her parent shop, right? Yes. So this guy's an employee here? He's not the owner? That's no. what he said. Oh, okay. You could roll an insight and try and discern what that might mean. Well then. Yeah, no. Um, he refers to himself as an employee and um, her as the employer, which usually implies that uh, she is the owner. And if that's the case, her parents might be out Dead. of the picture. Oh. I'm sorry. You said that she is your employer. I thought she her parents were the owners of this establishment. Mm, no. Uh, after the fallout and, you know, 20 years of drinking, her father, uh, bless his soul, is no longer with us. And um, the mother wasn't really a presence to begin with. Almost said so. Okay. Um... <laughs> We're streaming, we're streaming, we're streaming. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, oh, that's quite sad. Um, well, since you don't set the meetings, would it be okay if we looked around and if maybe on her way back after we run some errands, do some things to pick up, um, I, I came back and just to have a conversation with her? I mean, uh, it's her choice to open the door or not. Uh, but yes, if you're wanting to look around the work, the display room, yeah, I'd be happy to point out anything that you might want. Uh, I should say that the workshop and the living quarters are off limits, though. Oh, of course, of course. I'm sure my friend here understands the separation between wanting to keep, not separation, I guess wanting to keep your workshop private from others, just in case you have sensitive things you're working on. It's not my workshop. I understand. I understand that. I'm just saying we, I'm just saying we'll follow the rules. I understand hmm. the advantage of staying out of someone's workshop. If someone entered my workspace, I would back their face in. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> What do you want to look at? This is really isn't my area of expertise. It's more my friend here. Um, so, if you don't mind, if we took a look around, I want a disguise kit, a jeweler's kit, a smooth a smith's tools, a thieves' tools, and tinker tools. I need to replace all my tools. Good point. Why do you have so many tools? Oh my he's god. A, he's a fucking artificer. What do you expect? Artificers get proficiency in nearly every tool set. Oh my god. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> I'll say that yes, you can resupply your tools. Um what was it? It was I need to look up that tab again. Uh, I think each. Do, 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 do. Okay, run run me down the 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 list again. What were what were your tools kits that you needed? Okay, uh, a disguise kit, a jewel. A disguise kit. Tools, smith tools, thieves tools, and tinkers tools. Okay, so disguise kit's gonna run you twenty five gold. Uh, I have, I have a disguise kit. Oh, wait, I probably wouldn't anymore now that I think about it. Oh my god. What were the other kits? I, I heard Disguise Kit and immediately uh, saw that one. Kit. A Jeweler's Kit? Yeah. Uh, that's 30. Alright. Oh, sorry. What else? <laughs> Smith's Tools. Smith's Tools? That's a another twenty-five. All 
All right. Uh, thieves tools. Thieves tools. Did I not set that on loop? God damn it. Skeet up. Butt up. Give me one second. Okay, one more time. Uh, what was the last one I told you? I gotta go. Oh, okay. So, I... I know. Yeah, Bye sorry. I gotta go play the tourney. We got, like, five games tonight or some shit like that I gotta go play. So. Oh, my God. That's an exaggeration, but still. Good luck, bro. Yep, see you guys. All right. Uh, so, these tools and Tinker's tools were the last two I had. Uh, thieves tools are 15 and tinkers tools are 25 15 and 25 yep what's the total I didn't count <laughs> I was writing it down Hundred and twenty altogether. All right. Since I am buying in bulk, would you be willing to do any kind of discount? Mm. I'd say not really my purview. I'm not the one who sets the prices. Fair enough. Can't get you in trouble with the boss, can we? Mm. I, I was beyond all these tools. He like puts them all down on the counter. Is there anything else you need? Do you have any health potions here? No, uh, we don't sell health potions. What else went on here tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> you say bought the pearl, so we have a pearl identify with uh you pay bought everything he needs yeah yeah you just you just really need to focus on what you want really yeah, yeah. other than that i mean i do they have any shields like uh yes shields? they they've got shields um they're not really more traditional shields uh Are they <laughs> as you would the think goblin shield that i'm using Yes, they would be. Um, here, give me one second. Let me pull up their item list. And also, I'd like to get two hand axes. Two hand axes? Yeah. I need to replace all my starting equipment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't need to nest it. Okay. I do have a genuine question. When are you ever going to use a hand axe? <laughs> like, <laughs> do you? It. Yeah, but I you don't... never. <laughs> I've got firebolt axe, but that's not. Okay, yeah. A blade could always come in handy, though, so I'll still get one hand axe. Okay. Um, yeah, so. For shields, uh, there seems to be this first one uh, that looks to be kind of just a mess of clockwork and ticking gears as it's constantly moving and shifting its shape. Um, you can see that it's, uh, out, uh, the most outward portion of it seems to be this wire wrapping of golden vines. Uh, that seem to protect the interior portions of uh, the clockwork inside this shield. Um, and as you look at it, those gold vines seem to weave and move in and out. Beyond that, you see a very plain-looking shield that is very reflective. And beyond that is just your, well, I wouldn't say average shield. It's looks to be a kind of heavy shield but uh it glimmers with uh runes all around it all right uh i would definitely in inquire about the first three 
and then I'm assuming all the rest are like normal. Yeah. Um, the first one you see him. <clears throat> um, that one is uh. Well, I'm not sure. Uh, he looks at the um catalog that he carries with him to pull up um the prices and uh, the items that entail. Um. All right. Uh, is 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 shield? She 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 she. There, shield. Um, this is a. Uh, uh, da, 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 yes. Shield of Iron Vines. It's, uh, looks like, uh, 2,500 gold. Really? 205,000? That seems a bit low. She spent so much time on it. Yeah. It's not me for me to say. 2,500 for that first one. What does it do? He kind of just shrugs. I didn't make it if I had the best... If I had something to do with a guess, it's um called the uh, Shield of Iron Vines, so... Probably has something to do with vines. Either, you know, restraining or holding or, you know. Eh, he shrugs. Alright. Do you not know what any of these shields do? Um, well, I know what some of them do. I just, you know, didn't make them, so... It's kind of hard to tell the intention, especially when what love is so busy with uh, all her other projects and jobs and other occupations. Which of these fields do you know what they do? Oh, well, um, that middle one will... One that's all shiny. You see, it uh, remembers the kind of uh, foes you fight. And inscribes it on the shield. Say if a, it knows what enemy you're fighting, it uh, gives you a bit of a, a bit of an edge. It's kind of like a reincarnation shield. Mm, sort of, yeah. What does her project do? Space listening on her love. Sorry, I know. Um, I don't know. She usually keeps pretty private about her inventions. Although, now that I think about it, she hasn't been really designing as much as she's been looking into something. I don't know. It's not my business. Maybe I should talk to her myself. I am quite versed in the arcane art. I might be able to assist her. Hey, well, um, like I said, I don't set up meetings for her. No, I will try to find her on my own. Hey, hey, are you gonna buy anything or? Uh, yeah, no, I will get the uh, 120 worth of tools and an axe costs like, what, 5 10 silver? A hand axe is going to run you back. Uh, it looks like 50 silver. Just like box standard <laughs> hand axe. Yeah, no, that's cheap as balls. Yep, that is what I'll buy. I will excuse myself. Uh, I'm assuming you pay either left before me or leaves with me. Yep. Uh, I will ask of 
QP since he's not here to watch the plays. Sure thing. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, let's shoot on over to uh, Dingus and Dongus, Ajax and uh, uh, what's his fuck? Uh, wow. Ajax. Wow. It's in the Discord, motherfucker. Oh, God. Yep. <clears throat> Ajax and you are walking up into the bricks. Uh, Ajax and bricks are walking up to uh, the well, currently walking up to the uh, through the residential ring. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, God Sean! Damn it. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, we're heading over to that. All right. Uh, Nope, that's the wrong ah, voice. That's the wrong voice. <laughs> Alright, so what are you heading to the library for? There's a couple things I need to look at. Anything in particular? You know anything about Rothill? Hmm. Can't say I'm too acquainted with uh most of the gods. Nope, Rothill is why there's a slight chance of me leveling an entire area about 20 miles wide. Is that right? Hmm. I've all, I can also accidentally make people immortal. Hmm. And he just keeps walking as he's saying this, like, completely nonchalantly. Well, um, if that is the case, it's, uh, honestly kind of impressive. No, it's not, not impressive, lie. considering... A little scary. I mean, considering how many times I've accidentally killed people. Hmm. Did you choose to do that, or...? At this point, I have no idea. I can't remember much of what happened. I was... One day I didn't have anything. All of a sudden, the next day, I was... You know, able to cast magic, and stuff of near cataclysmic proportions was happening around me hmm. well then i guess that's well that bargains uh a little research i guess yeah what are you looking to find out in particular anything at this point there's so little about him anywhere i need any information i can get yeah well the evil gods have, well, fallen out of popularity ever since the, you know, the empirical wars. There's uh, not been a high demand for really any acts like that. So, can't imagine that uh, he's a popular deity to be following. I mean, he's the god of chaos. I doubt it. Oh well. Little chaos is necessary for living. Provides the struggles that we need to overcome, you know? Perhaps. I'm not saying that... The thing is, I hate him. With a burning passion. <laughs> but that is well, not necessary. That's not necessarily because of what he is. It is because of what he has caused me to do. Hmm. I, I was under the impression that a god of chaos has no real control of what happens as much as, you know, uh, it sounds like you. Well, really the thing is, is that he, chance. he caused me to have this, and as far as I've come across, more th there's more things bad than good to happen. Hmm. More things bad than good, you say, huh? Well. Are you certain of that? You know, people have a well, a certain tendency to only look at the negative. Well, the thing is, I know when something has happened in the area because I glow brightly like a a, a roaring flame. Mm-hmm. And then... Well, you did that last night, if I remember right. Yep. Luckily, nothing happened as far as I know with that one. But 
as far as some other ones that have happened, I have caused the goblins to claim an area as a holy site, killing everyone and everything in the area. Um... I have caused people to fall off cliffs. I have caused people to go inside out. I have caused so many things. And most of the time, nothing good happens. Hmm. Well, I've had a couple said. small good things happen, but it's either bad or benign. Hmm. I think that uh, maybe you're being a little too hard on yourself. Sometimes uh, we can not really see what uh, he's come of uh, our actions. I'm a bane upon the world, my friend. I'm a bane upon the world. So Who says you? Says nearly everyone that's interacted with me. Because most people that interact with me have either died or... Or have family died? Ask Mint. Hmm. Well, either way, you're looking to try and fix it, and I think that's admirable. Believe me, there's a part of me that just thinks my own death is enough of a fix. Hmm. Well, some might say you're right, some might say you're wrong. I'm not really here to arbitrate that. Once again, ask Mint. He'd probably say my death would be worth it. Hmm. Is, you see, that's the one thing I'm a little confused about. Is Mint the he or is he she? Uh, she introduced herself as she and also he. Hey, I'm a little fuzzy on the details. Just go with whatever they tell you at the time. Hmm. All right. Well. I'll try and respect that. Anyways, I'm not really hopeful that we'll find anything of use. You might have to stay in town a while to actually, you know, receive accreditation to get into, you know, the library. But if you are really pressed for information, I've got a couple friends in there. What's the cost? What do you mean, what's the cost? I want to just do by... Is it so hard to believe that I want to do right by my friends? Look, I've... If what my little story told you, I've come to learn that there's no such thing as a free meal. The fact that you've been buying stuff for us has pretty much led to you building rapport so you could have us do the thing to get rid of love. Well, I'm not going to lie, a little of that is you getting rid of love, but it's not like you're required to do that. I'm, I've got many friends all around this city. I can find somebody to do the job. I just think that your little group, well, you're interesting. I think that you do well at this. Excel, even. What is your end goal? Hmm. My end goal is unclear. He kind of raises his hand to the sky. <laughs> Long story short, I just want to make money. There's people that depend on me for it. And there's some people who, uh, well, I just need <laughs> to kind of disappear. You know, we love being an example of it. I'll never understand just... people like you. Yeah, what is that? Is it so hard to believe that uh, I just want to look out for the interests of me and the people around me? Well, that's the thing. Most of the time when people want to look out for their own and, you know, the people they care about, they don't give out money to random strangers that come into the area. Because you bought, if you pay that circlet, you mm -hmm. have given money for a lot of other things for everybody else. And yeah. that just makes me more concerned. 
if you're wondering if I'm running up a tab for all you, I'm not. Secondly, you're my friends and you need some help in this city. God knows when I got here, nobody would help me out. I would have killed for somebody like myself, he points to himself. <laughs> Rex is just watching him out of, the, out of the side of his eye, which actually looks a little weird because... Ajax will probably notice that that the eye that's looking at him is actually slowly moving to kind of like stare directly at him. Briggs, has anybody told you that you're not the most stable thing? Oh, I'm aware. He raises the wooden hand. No, not in like a physical sense. I mean, like, how do I put it? It's like you're not letting yourself, you know, feel completely. Like you're always on edge. And, you know, from what you've told me, good reason to be on edge. But also, that kind of depriving can't be healthy for you. How are you supposed to help others if you can't even help yourself, you know? <laughs> oh, God. You know, that is an excellent question. Do I know the answer to that? No. Do I necessarily care right now? No. If helping myself does not seem to be a thing I care about, because why would I help myself? when I have caused the pain of so many others. Well, do you know if those other people deserved it? Almost none of them did. Well, let's take that um, little fiasco with the goblins, for example. You do know that Aetherian Empire is basically occupying, you know, previously occupied land. Like, it's not, it's not a place that they should be settling in. Some might say that it's a good thing that you caused a bit of an uprising, an uproar, a hullabaloo. Yes, and maybe, maybe if the people that had been targeted in that area were, you know, Ethereum soldiers or something like that, then maybe I would not feel as bad. But the fact of the matter is, it was Mint's people that were caught up. Just a town of people that didn't, you know, they weren't doing Rick, anything. I, you're missing the point. What I'm saying is, why are you upholding yourself to be the one to judge the morality of these actions? It's not really for you to say, is it? If I can't hold myself to my own actions, nobody else will, because they're too afraid of me. I ain't afraid of you. That's because you haven't seen me turn somebody inside out. Yeah. You could say the same for me. He kind of looks at you with a stare that uh, is more serious than the cheerful attitude he's given off. Look, I'm yeah. trying not to judge you. I just want to know what your intentions are with me and my friends. That's all I, I want to know. This. You don't get anywhere, anywhere without the, knowing the right kind of people. And having those kinds of connections can be helpful. And rather than extort, I'd like to just be on good terms with people. Understood? That's all. Yeah, Brooks is just kind of sitting there. Just The look on his face is almost like I cannot compute. Like, literally, <laughs> literally, you could almost hear the Windows dial-up sound as that one eye is just staring at Ajax. Uh, 
I don't know. Look, well, I need information. If you're willing to give it, I guess I can't ask. I can't ask for information only to then get rejected when it's brought to me. Fair enough. And you see, I'll try my best to get you in there. And again, it might take a couple days for you to even be let into the library. Now, how do I put this? He's kind of in a, a second of thought before you see a, um, a dragonborn kind of approach you and not even register that you're there before stumbling over you. Bricks, yeah, Bricks just gets... <laughs> Falls on his butt, curls, and just curls up for a second. Sticks his head up. Looks left and right, and then just gets up and brushes himself off. What? What the hell? He looks around. Down here. <laughs> and it spots, um... He spots, uh... Ajax first, before uh, going... You asshole, did you trip me? Down here. He looks around. Down. Look down. down. It's continuing Hi. to look. Doesn't register. Little little fish dog, right here. I uh, I actually like p pull the staff off my back and raise it and just wave it up high. You see him look really concerned for a moment before pulling out a dagger and going, "What the hell's this? What you doing?" He points the dagger over at Ajax. Oh, whoa, 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 nothing. It's just my friend here. You tripped over him friend here uh he looks around i don't see no friend <coughs> you best be better ready to pay or at least say you're sorry <laughs> am i uh, invisible no, just don't don't worry about it uh here uh, take a penny for your time as he flicks it over a piece of gold i'm sorry for tripping you he um continues on his way, uh, the dragonborn looking very confused. Bricks is sitting there just like, what the fuck just happened? Just arms out, confusion on his face. Ajax looks down at you and shrugs. I... I know I'm short. I get tripped on all the time. Was I just straight invisible to that man? Maybe. Could be one of those glowy things that you do. Actually, no, that would make a lot of sense. It just turns and keeps walking. You come upon a large building. It seems to be fairly open air, at least on the second level. On the primary level, it's built up with that golden sandstone. And uh, inside, you can see that this is an opened archway with these uh, large wooden doors uh, opened up. Uh, it seems that they're airing out. Uh, after all, today is a very nice, cool evening. Or, well, a very nice, cool morning. Uh, there is a man who sits behind the counter, uh, this reception, and uh, he has these thick bifocals. Uh, this orcish man, and uh, he's holding up a very thick tome, um, almost just squinting as if that's, you know, <laughs> even possible with how thick his glasses are. Um, honestly, well, this man's prescription may just be out of date or just very poor. Mm -hmm. um, you see Ajax approach and say, well, Heidi, hey there. Um, we would like uh, permission to enter into the upstairs library so that we can gain access to... What was it? Information on Ravil. Ravil, that's right. Um, so if you don't mind, uh, we'll just be... <clears throat> can I get your... Passes? Oh, yes, well, of course, I can do that. Uh, uh, he starts to pat himself down. Uh, Rex, did you happen to bring your card with you? 
He just shakes his head. Darn. Um, listen here, friend. I could really use a favor here. Uh, I live on the southern end of town. It's a real walk to get here. Do you mind just permitting us? No pass, no entry. Uh, come on. Uh, please. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Oh. Sorry. Uh, sorry. I cannot do that for you. Quick question. <sighs> Is he registering the fact that I'm standing there? He, well, he's got those thick glasses on. It's kind of hard to tell what he registers. But it, you do see him peer down at you um, when um, Ajax brings you up. Okay. I just wanted to see if I was actually, like, invisible to anybody who doesn't know me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. Well, uh, could... Hmm. Is there any kind of waiting list we can get on to get access, or... If you have sufficient credentials from any university or schooling, yes, you may enter. He, uh, kind of pats himself down. Um, I don't know, Bricks, do you got any schooling thingamabob, or... You kind of notice as he's kind of like, um, you see him like pull open the cloak and he's trying to scratch something down on a piece of parchment underneath his cloak. I inside try to understand what he's trying to do. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Fuck it, I'm going to roll tides on it. Because why not? Okay. I, it, it's this man. I, 23. Yeah. Um, you see, he's just like, he's got a tiny, like, quill on his fingertip as he's scratching in words into a piece of parchment in his cloak, mm. trying to hide it from the, uh, person uh, across the counter. Uh, Bricks is gonna make, like, a big show of, like, pulling off his backpack and, like, starting to ruffle through it. Just, you know. I'll grant him advantage for that. Yeah, just like he—he's obviously just trying to like keep attention on him on himself for a second. Buddy, that's two threes. Oh God damn your it! Your modifier is not gonna save you from that. Uh... Unless this man rolls a one. Oh, you know what? I think I have it right here. As he pulls out the scratch piece of paper, um, the uh pen nib that he had attached to his finger drips a big glob of ink smudging it all the way down god damn uh, it <laughs> you fucking dumbass <laughs> he the man behind the counter looks up like a really <laughs> if you need any kind of submission into the library you can wait in the queue for... Oh, he pulls out an encyclopedia. It looks like it's going to be about three weeks before we can admit new participants. Yeah, go ahead, put us on that list. Sorry, Bricks. It's fine. I have an idea. It's not gonna be a good one, but it's something. Mm -hmm. Um, Bricks will like say his thank yous and you know, kind of motion Ajax for us to head outside. You do so. Okay. I need to ask a question of you. Yeah. Since I'm gonna guess here that Raville's interactions with the world, by and large, probably are not common. I would hesitate to say yes, yeah. I'm in, in the exact way that I am currently am. Mm-hmm. Do you think... 
if we went to a it, it, first question college university magic study area anything like that in this town well yeah there's the aetherian college it's the you know it's you know the the thing that's attached to this library it's a sub the, the library is a subsidiary of it okay now i should say admittance usually comes along with a test at the beginning of spring that's not necessarily what i'm looking for here what if i was a research subject i mean you could be basically like i give myself over as a research subject they give me the credentials needed to get into the library um i'm not certain that's how it works but it's worth a shot i mean it's something because the thing is right i i guess i'd be considered a sorcerer and maybe because of the way my magic works it could allow something i'm i'm just because your thing didn't work we're kind of up shit creek without a paddle it's an idea well i could talk with bell but <sighs> no we can try it and I'm not certain that'll work but it's definitely worth a shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, who knows? Maybe while we're in there, I'll glow, cause something to happen, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, sure. So, yeah. Well, uh, do you not think it'd probably be more pressing to meet up with uh, some of your friends? This sounds like something that we could probably use some help with. I mean, okay. I'm just a thought that, and you know, you might, it's getting pretty late in the day. You might want to grab the, what you, oh uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. It is about that time, isn't it? I also probably don't want to show up in rags. There. Yeah, that's uh, maybe a good reason why they didn't let us in to begin with. We don't look like the studious types, you know? Yeah. All right. Let's go. All righty. Um, on your way back, we'll say that's when you probably meet Akhenaten. Akhenaten approaches, and um, he sees, obviously, Ajax first, and then Brix. And um, he says... Ajax, that was a very informative journey you sent me on. I have learned an important word, an important phrase. Project the Claw. Was that that's what it was called, right? Or Talon? Was it Claw or Talon? Talon. Talon. Uh, the Talon, right? Um, <laughs> where did I delete those notes? And uh, he says, the conclusion that I have come to is that so the possible solution is that we find maybe a silver bullet of sorts that proves this, that proves the existence of the Talon. And we bring this evidence to this agent love. And if she acknowledges that she knew about it, then she must either, one, leave and prove that she is of upright moral standing. Or two, stay and show that she is indeed evil, in which case I will show no remorse in killing her. K-wording her. <laughs> okay, yes. just, just say um, take care of. But I don't like that. <laughs> it just, it's too nice. It's too, I feel bad. Because that implies that I'm going to be nice when I'm not. <laughs> Akhenaten, buddy. You have to learn about context. Hmm. What is that? Oh, well, God. It's yeah. good to hear that uh, you're at least going to consider the offer. Uh, I've got a lot of goods that need to come into the city, and 
You know, it'd be nice to at least have a somebody confront her about uh, the sins of the father, you know? I believe, knowing this, I think even if you had not offered me this job, I possibly would have confronted her about it anyways. Well, um, good to see that you're a man of a upstanding moral character. Uh, we're just about to go get the clothing that uh, was ordered yesterday. You want to come along, Louise? Of course. Can I follow? Yes, uh, you do so. Uh, you find yourself back at the ostentatious pink shop of uh, Cat. Um, and as you enter, uh, you see a kobold run out and run into bricks before falling down on his face, getting up, looking around, and then just continuing to go on with his day. Hmm. A newt. How interesting. Uh, what is happening? Whatever. Ajax shrugs. Well, I can't say that I've been here a whole lot. Know that uh, the owner's a big band from the Eastern Empire. Oh, I know, Cat. How do you know? Yeah. Well, isn't that just fascinating? Uh, they walk in. Uh, you all walk in with a satisfying ding of the door. And uh, Cat comes up to greet you. Oh, Akhenaten! Or, no, that's not his voice. Oh, Akhenaten. Um, oh, and, um, you brought a friend. Uh, are they here to order clothes? Uh, wait, does she know me? Or do they you, know you, me? You came, out, you came in with us. Yeah. Right, right, okay. Um, Akhenaten nods, um, and says, I'm, yes. I'm down here. Um, uh, there's okay. Bricks. You know him. Um. Uh, he looking down at the ground. Is he? Is he? Um. Well, in some sort of magical. Bricks will walk up and grab his leg. Oh, oh there. Mm -hmm. Yep, there he is. Uh, Can you see uh, me now? Um, if I say yes, will you let go of my leg? Yes. Then yes. I let go. <laughs> Wait, are you telling me you can't see him? Mm, I figured that you were all pulling uh, my leg. Well, you bricks no, more literally. Bricks. Yeah, I... yes, brick was pulling your leg. What is happening? Bricks, it appears that you are invisible. To a handful of people. Because the, or the orc at the counter could see me. You guys could see me. Some people can't. What is happening? Perhaps the only people who can't see you are those who do not have love in their hearts for you. <laughs> oh, so the random orc librarian could see me because as an axolotl, the first time meeting him had love in his heart for me? Possibly. Well, who are the people that couldn't see you? Uh, uh, well, obviously me. So Dragonborn, it's not... and okay, the guy that just left. Oh, uh, Pats, the kobold. Eh. Hmm. Well, um, regardless, I'm sure that uh, we can go ahead and still get the fitting. I'm fairly used to doing things by touch, so. Shouldn't be a problem. A break, okay, hold on. Like I, I, first or... I want to try something. Hold on. I'm gonna put my. I'm gonna take my staff off, and I'm gonna put it on the ground in front of me and let go. Can you see the staff? Um. Yes. It's sitting there now. Yes. I pick it up. It uh, disappears. Uh, as we have ruled invisibility, anything that you are holding or carrying becomes. Uh, invisible as well. Anything that is on your person. Okay. So it just appears and then disappears. Okay. Frix just is like, well, Ajax, you're one, you're seeing one of the more benign things 
but also one of the more frustrating things. I cast light on bricks, and it's like traffic cone orange. Um, <laughs> and I say, uh, Akron says, um, perhaps that will help for any further incidents. Is it just an uh, invisible light? Is there just light coming from nowhere now? To cat? Pretty much. At least to cat, yes. Does it, uh, wait, does it, because I was imagining it stick onto him and he'd look like a glowing orb. <laughs> no, I think it's no, literally it, one of those. this indescribable presence <laughs> that just glows. It's like, just, there's that... no form to it. There's, there's suddenly a glow a light. in the room. <laughs> It That's just... actually kind of terrifying. <laughs> that is horrifying. I think, I think what you were, I think what you were intending was like, have you ever seen that picture of like the guy sitting at um like a dining count, uh, a dining, a <laughs> and he himself is light, and he's yeah, just and he's, and he's light, glowing, like orange. yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. That's what you were trying to do. Instead, you managed to create a hidden light. That is, which is a horrifying <laughs> statement. Yes. Yeah, because you're like. Where is that light coming from? Nobody knows. It's in its general proximity and nowhere else, and we don't know why. <laughs> well, uh, I um, think I've just created the most innovative way to fuck with people. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, regardless, uh, let's, if you mind turning whatever you're doing off, and uh, let's get you fitted. Yeah. He, uh, walks behind the counter. He takes you into the fitting room and puts together your uh, uh, entire outfit, complete with pith hat with the same kind of material that's uh, uh, that's ever flowing vine texture on it on the khaki. I'd like to think what literally happens is Cat like gives me a piece of clothing, and it just it, since I haven't like actively like equipped it or anything yet, it's just kind of floating there for a second, and then it just disappears. Just over and over again. You just you just hear a yep. and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Um let's see. Uh the um Oh, what was his name? Pupe. He uh pulls up the Oh yes, Pupe. He uh pulls up um his uh pipe and blows bubbles out of it. Hmm. That'll be along later. Oh, I'm sure. Do you have any, um... Uh, you've already paid. Yep. Uh, let's see. Um, do you need anything else? I've already supplied you with your uh, fine clothes as well. Yeah, so I had three sets of clothes total. Mm-hmm. Yep, and I have all of them. All right, beautiful. All right. All right. Well, lovely, darling. It's been a pleasure to see you again. Well... Well, I was about to say. You, but, um, <laughs> I need to figure out. Remember, if you have any good rib ticklers, I'd be more than overjoyed to hear a joke from you. Yep. And Bricks just walks out. Oh, did did he leave? I did. He, he's looking at. Clearly, there's no this orange glow in the vicinity anymore. I'd like to think it's just Cat was talking at one spot where it wasn't even actually there, and just like <laughs> off, like Brooks was actually like off to the left, like three feet, and Brooks was like, "Yeah," and then just walks out, and then Cat's just like, "Wait, oh, you're over there? No, you okay?" <laughs> you said that you like. Jokes, is that correct? Oh god. Oh, I treasure them. Please, if you've got one. He says, um... Uh... Wait, hold on. <laughs> Wait. Give me one second. I need to Google it. Um... <laughs> uh... He says, um... A dog walks into a bar. Yes. And he says, It is too dark in here. I will go in the other one. And then he starts laughing, like, really loud. <laughs> like, re like, it's the funniest thing he's ever heard in his life. 
<laughs> he kind of stares. Well, that one's certainly unique. It's um, kind of in the vein of those not jokes, right? No, no, hold on. Let me repeat it. <laughs> a dog walked into a bar and says, I can't see a thing. I'll open this one. And then he starts laughing again. Like, like, as, like. <laughs> Like it's the uh, abs like it's pinnacle of comedy. Does Dave goodness. Chappelle exist in this world? No, he doesn't. Because <laughs> Akhenaten does. And that's that's what Akhenaten thinks right now. Um yeah, no. Um you see Kat pull out a, a small a journal and he jots that down. Well, certainly it's an addition to the collection. It... Thank you. And then he walks he... out. <laughs> oh. Well, it, n nice talking to you. Um, if you're with Bricks, remember you have a discount on any clothing that you might like to get. Wait, what is like? What is like? Is like it? What is the like? As Akhenaten walks through the store, is there a hat and or random accessory within reach that may or may not <laughs> catch his eye? <laughs> Just like anything. Um, now, now, understand, Akhenaten is not familiar with this land or its dressings or its customs, so, like, yeah. I think a pink bowler hat with a big feather in it really catches oh, okay. your eye. Yeah, so he sees that, and he's like, hmm, this is quite spectacular. How much would this cost? Um, normally about uh, only five gold, but for you... Oh, we'll say we'll cut it in half. Uh, two gold and fifty silver. Three gold, and I won't go any higher. Lower. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and I give. I, he gives him three gold. All right, you hand over the gold. Hey, we'll and he puts on the hat. <clears throat> and he's like, "I feel stylish," and he walks out. All right. Um, <laughs> have a good day. Just got haggled up from a discount. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, well, guys, I'm going to head out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think that's probably. Yeah, that, that's yeah. that's a really good spot to end it. <laughs> All right. Uh, I do want to end it with uh, bricks. As soon as you exit the store, you see, um, just these incredibly bright golden flames erupt from a uh, crowd as it seems to dance and move across the uh, crowd heading towards the west end of the city. And yeah, that's where we'll end. Bricks is just like, he raises his hands to the sky, gets on his knees and like, why? <laughs> I'd like to think everybody in the vicinity just looks at the empty space that's coming from. Bricks is so real for that. <laughs> I think, I, well, what would happen is, like, some people look and register this little water dog sitting there crying out to the sky, why? <laughs> While some look just very confused and look around. It's almost uh, as if they would be more confused if Bricks wasn't invisible. E exactly, yeah. <laughs> like, somehow, Bricks being invisible made him more normal. Yeah. I, if you if you want, uh, go ahead and roll me eh, perception. Me? Yeah. Nine. Yeah, uh, there's something in common with all the people that look at you. They just don't really register it. Oh, fucking hell. It's probably like every, everybody has a certain colored eye or some shit. <laughs> or has yeah, a certain color like on them. Everybody right. wearing the color pink can't see you. I'm gonna pass the fuck out. Have a good night, everybody. I love you all. Later. Alright, don't die. Have fun. Alright, stream, that's gonna be it for us. I will see you guys next time. Later!